About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away, this is what we waited for. Looking back, eyes on the freeway Bonnie and Clyde, a classic cliche We're on the run, this is what we waited for I've improved, 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 improved by a whole grade, by a whole grade, by a whole grade. My teacher isn't just Mr. Maddock, it's a whole teaching team made up of James, Mike and Marta. My classroom's all about doing and applying. My day standing at the front of the classroom with a PowerPoint are long gone. I master every concept by learning at my own pace. I spend 100% of my class time interacting and supporting individual students. I move on only when the moment is right for me, not the whole class. I know what each and every student is mastering and struggling on at every moment. I know exactly what I need to learn next, and I can go back and review material at any time. I spend my teaching time supporting and inspiring, not planning, delivering and marking. I can learn from anywhere at any time. I can switch off when school closes, knowing they are learning from the best. My teacher has my homework marked before I get to class. I set every piece of homework at the start of the year. I'm two weeks ahead of my expected progress. I can track everyone's progress with a swipe of a finger. I can track my own progress and set my own targets. I now have time to focus on developing the skills of every learner in my classroom. I know exactly what it means to explain, evaluate and analyse and I'm not afraid of any exam. My lessons are now far more about the skills and the application, not just the content itself. I've completely remodeled what it means to be a teacher in my classroom. Vale, pues aquí estamos. Bienvenidos a la segunda sesión de revisión. Uh, yo soy Marta y conmigo tengo a James en los controles. Hola, James. Hola, ¿cómo, est cómo estamos? Muy bien, gracias. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo estás? Sí, muy bien. Muy bien, sí, sí. estupendo. Y en las redes sociales tenemos a Mike, pero Mike no está aquí hoy, está en casa. Mike trabaja desde casa hoy. 
So, we're going to be bringing you um, some Spanish revision today on the topic of relationships. And also, we're going to be looking at how the reflexive verbs work or how we can use verbs reflexively. We'll be looking at that in the second part of the the second half of the session. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to tell you too much about this. So let me get, start by giving you a few reminders. Okay, the first thing I want to make sure what you should be making sure you've got is your um, notes. Okay, notes and practice activities. If you're watching this live, please make sure you've got them. You've got them printed out. If you haven't or you're watching this on demand, you've got here where you've got the description please click you've got a link to all these notes on the notes of course the notes are here to give you a basis of where to take um, your own notes and of course the practice questions are here to you know for you to check have i understood this how am i getting on segundo Segundo, muy, muy, muy importante, suscríbete a YouTube, suscríbete a nuestro canal de YouTube, The Ever Learner. It's so, so, so important that you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. So if you're watching this, obviously you're watching these on YouTube. So somewhere around here, you should have a red button that says subscribe. Just click on it right now and also turn notifications on. This will allow us to increase the amount of um, or the quality of what we offer. And, and give you uh, more services and you know it will be a better experience for everyone so please please do subscribe tercero tercero contáctanos get in touch okay really important during the session you've got two um, ways of interacting with us one way is by answering our interactive question. You can do this during the session you may want to do this during the break or you can do it after the session. The interactive question for this session is a listening question. Okay, we're going to show you now how you can access that question. So, um, yeah, James, if we can quickly show how we can do that. So we, you need to go. No problem. One you second. Need, you need to go on to the everlearner.com. Bear with me. James is having a few problems right now. No, I, no, <laughs> no problems. I was just thinking about something else now. All right. Uh, one second. So. What we so, need to so do, James, guys, you basically were not paying attention, were you? That's the that's the problem. That would be a, <laughs> that would be a reasonably accurate description, yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what we need for you guys is come to theeverlearner.com, nice and simple. Click on news on here, and once you've clicked on news, you'll notice you've got actually some kind of cool, useful, interesting things to read here. Who knows? You might find something else. But most importantly, please click on this yellowy green one here: interactive questions. Um, what you're going to find in there is a load of content, including some uh, GCC and A-level P stuff. But down here, we've got GCC Spanish. And you see here, Session 2 Relationships. Click on there. And in here, you have got a really nice Google form for you to complete and to, to complete some answers. Noticing that Marta has recorded a really beautiful audio file to go Amazing in there. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, re it's really nice. So it's, it's, this is a really nice thing for you. Um, to be able to go and have a little take part in and submit your answers for. So we really, really recommend you do it. It's really easy and uh, we're looking for the best answers that we can receive and we are going to reward those answers as well. So get it done. Yep. And also, of course, you've got up to um, the next session, which is on Tuesday at uh, one o'clock to submit those answers. OK, so if you're watching this live, you don't need to be doing this as you're watching us uh, and you don't need to rush it. But please, by Tuesday, if you can have them uh, sent over so that, yeah, we can reward um, those ones which we consider to be the best answers. Siguiente, next thing I want to remind you of, hashtag revision break. We want to know what you're doing during during your revision break. We're going to have a couple of breaks during this session and during all the sessions. So we would like you to send us pictures of what's around you, what is happening, what are you doing while you're taking those really important revision breaks. So, um, James, again, can we quickly show where they have to go? They have to, um, you can do it through Twitter mm -hmm. or um, yeah, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at the hashtag revision break and uh, and yeah and we'll we'll receive your lovely lovely pictures okay so yes hashtag revision break there we go so, so it's on the screen for you call me out again there Marta. again oh. i wasn't concentrating what am i doing um so here we go so yeah you see here just send us your photos in it's got the the hashtag on there we really want to see what you're up to basically it, it's it's nice for us to get a bit of feedback on how people receive these sessions and how you take a bit of kind of fun in between so 
so do share that with us and we'll look forward to uh, we'll look forward to receiving those so yeah that would be that would be nice mm -hmm. perfecto muchas gracias james pues ahora vamos a empezar con la primera la primera parte de esta sesión sobre las relaciones de acuerdo sobre las relaciones entre Microsoft personas uh, muy 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 importante los micrófonos ok while i'm working on the canvas while I'm explaining to you the most important vocabulary you should uh, remember about relationships. I'm going to be using a canvas. I'm going to be using this different this different microphone, all right? Uh, so the volume might be different, okay? It might be louder, it might be lower. So just be prepared to, you know, quickly turn the volume up or down depending on, on, on what you need, okay? And that's all I need to say for now. So... Uh, I'm gonna get ready and uh, I'll see you again after this, uh, this episode on las relaciones. Hasta luego. So here we've got the canvas and here we've got, I've put here some vocabulary, some of the verbs that we, that I'm going to be using while I go through the, some of the most important expressions and some of the most important vocabulary on, on relationships. So I'm going to, we're going to keep an eye on these because these are the main things I'm going to be using. Um, so to start with, we've got these two people, yeah, tenemos a dos personas aquí. Tenemos a este chico, tenemos un chico y tenemos una chica, ¿sí? Un chico y una chica. Este chico es soltero, este chico es soltero y esta chica es soltera. Soltero y soltera, single. Estos chicos no se conocen, no se conocen. ¿Sí? Conocerse, to know each other. If I say no se conocen, this is they don't know each other. Pero en un momento, at a certain point, ¿sí? aquí se conocen. Se conocen. This can mean they know each other. They know each other. Or they meet for the first time. Okay, they meet for the first time. Y empiezan, empiezan a salir, empezar a salir, to start going out, okay? Salir, salir, and we could say salir juntos, to go out together, ¿sí? Empiezan a salir juntos. We could say se llevan, se llevan bien. They get on well. Se llevan bien. Se ríen, se ríen. They laugh, they laugh. And here is the verb reírse. Y si seguimos, se, we could say se, Enamoran, they fall in love. Enamorarse, we've got it here. Enamorarse, to fall, to fall in love. We could say se aman o se quieren. They love each other. Amarse, quererse, to love each other. En este punto, we could say here, son novios. They are boyfriend and girlfriend. Este es el novio y esta es la novia. And we could say son una pareja. They are a couple. Okay, a couple. The word pareja. A couple. If we carry on, si continuamos, aquí se casan, se casan, they get married. Notice the verb casarse, we've got it here, again, to get married. Okay, notice that most of these verbs, they've got this se in front. We will look um, in the second part of this revision session how these work. Why is it se casan, se enamoran, okay? But se casan, they get married. In the wedding, 
Remember the wedding, la boda, la boda. Este es el novio y esta es la novia. Y esta es la novia. Hmm? So notice that novio can be boyfriend or groom. Novia can be girlfriend or bride. Okay, so, so these words, novio and novia, can mean both things. And once they're married, they are un, un matrimonio, a married couple. See, ¿Sí? un matrimonio. Okay, we could see at this point, we could say, son felices, they're happy. Sonríen, they laugh. Okay, they, they smile, sorry. Sonreír, to smile. Se comprenden, they understand each other. Se comprenden. We could still use the se llevan bien. They do get on well. Pero entonces, oh, desastre, desastre. Entonces, aquí se llevan, oh, uh, sorry, se llevan, se llevan mal, ¿sí? Se llevan mal, llevarse mal, to get on badly, se llevan mal. ¿Qué pasa? Discuten, discuten, ¿sí? Discuten, se pelean, se pelean, no se soportan o no se aguantan. They can't stand each other. No se soportan, no se aguantan. Se molestan, they bother each other, they annoy each other. Así que, ¿qué pasa? Se, se separan, se separan. Y aquí él es o está separado. Y está separada. Y finalmente, se, se divorcian. Está divorciado y está divorciada. Okay. The one thing I forgot to mention up here, okay, at this point, joining together with the está separado, está divorciado, of course, as they while they when while they are married, I can say here está casado y está casada. Okay. And then we can say something. So this moment of separation divorce can be a little bit sad, okay? So I can use verbs like llorar to cry, lloran, they cry. Um, estar triste, okay, están tristes, they are sad. We could even say, se echan de menos, they miss each other, okay, to miss someone, echar de menos, okay, but hopefully we'll be able to say at the end, son felices in the end okay so 
as you can see, there are lots and lots of expressions that can um, ex that, that can explain or can refer to positive and negative interactions in terms of relationships. You know, um, sort of love life relationship, how you get on with one another. Okay, and when if you're writing about it, for example, how would you use? Let's have a look at which ones we could use if we want to say whether we are, we get on well or we get on badly with people. So we're going to have some positive um, expressions on the one hand and some negative expressions on the other hand. OK, so some positive expressions. What am I going to say if I want to say that I get on well with someone or I, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with someone. So I can say me llevo, me llevo bien, I get on well. And if I want to say with someone, that will be um, followed with con, okay? Me llevo bien con, I don't know, me llevo bien con Juan, I get on well with Juan, okay? I could also say something like me, me relaciono, me relaciono con, I have a relationship or I, yeah, I, I, I spend time with, okay, me relaciono con Juan. I could also say me, me divierto o me divierto con, okay, I can say me divierto con mis amigos, me divierto con mis amigos, I have fun with my friends, o lo paso, lo paso bien, o lo paso bien con, okay, mm, lo paso bien con mis primos. I have a good time with my cousins. I can also say, if I want to talk about generally speaking, how I'm feeling, I could say, me siento, okay, me siento feliz, me siento contenta o contento, me siento orgulloso, I feel proud, o orgullosa, okay. If I want to express more negative feelings, more negative relationships. I can say, for example, me llevo, me llevo mal, o me llevo mal con, let's say, me llevo mal con Natalia. I get on badly with Natalia. I can also use, for example, um, me, me peleo con. I fight with, okay? Me peleo con mi hermano. I fight with my brother, something that happens quite often. Me peleo con mi hermano. Um, I can also say, no soporto a o no aguanto. A, I can't stand. I can't stand. No soporto a... No soporto a mi hermana, for example. Or the negative feelings for people. We could say, me aburro. Me aburro con. I get bored with. Okay. Me aburro con Miguel. He hasn't really got a conversation. Me, aburre, me aburro con Miguel. I could also say, Miguel, if I want to go even more sophisticated, I could say, Miguel me aburre. Miguel bores me, okay? I could also go for things like, for example, lo paso mal, I have a bad time, okay? O me siento triste, for example, I feel sad, okay? And also a, a really nice expression, that we can also, you know, we can always use. It's not, it's neither negative nor positive. It's a feeling we have when we haven't seen someone for a while. And we can use this expression that I used above. Echar de menos, to miss someone. Okay, so I can say, echo de menos a, okay, for example, echo de menos a Maria. I miss Maria.
bueno, bienvenidos de nuevo. I hope you found that useful. Probably the vocabulary on relationships is, is probably part of some of the vocabulary I personally would find the most challenging because there are lots of quite complex structures. So it's a really good one to use if you really want to show off. Okay, if you think, you know, my Spanish is really good. And, you know, if, if when you're in your speaking or in your writing, if you really want to, to refer to that and use this vocabulary, it will probably be quite impressive, especially because of the um, reflexive verbs that we're going to see in the second half. But also if you're, you know, if you're not that confident confident with your Spanish, just learn a few of the expressions, okay? Things like no soporto, uh, me llevo bien con, and, and many of those, the, the more, you know, using the I form, uh, me gustan, you know, like me gusta or me, mm, I don't know, uh, right now I've, I've run out of ideas, but you know, you're always talking about yourself, that's what you're going to um, find the most useful, okay? Uh, so, just James, do, 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 were you going to say anything? I was, I was going to say when when I was a student, I mean, I, I actually didn't do any uh, GCC languages, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is interesting that's... these days. That's bad. I, I well, funnily enough, I remember my uh, French teacher at the end of year eight saying to me, "I'd never be a linguist." Mm. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and uh, and what, why is it interesting? Do you do what, what languages can can you tell us what languages you speak um, these days? It depends what you mean by what I speak. I mean, I speak Catalan fluently. Mm -hmm. um, I have a go at Spanish. But it's not mm -hmm. great. My Spanish, my my Castilian Spanish isn't is not brilliant. But I, you know, I can do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a little go at German sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a little. I've had a little go at Italian in the past, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been able to communicate communicate reasonably efficiently mm -hmm. in Italy. And I have a, I've had a little attempt at. Dutch here and there as well. Yeah, we've so, heard about the campsite Dutch. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've had a little go at some Dutch type, but I wouldn't. The what? But the, the one foreign language I would consider myself to be fluent in is Catalan. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that in my mind, that's my foreign language, and I, I sort of play with the others. I suppose that mm -hmm. would be a better description. And let, remind us where is Catalan from, because some people won't have heard yeah. of that. Okay, Cat language at all. Uh, Catalan is the language of Catalonia, which is the uh, which is the region of Spain in the the northeast region of Spain. And it's also, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's also the southeast re region of France as well. And isn't there a little bit of Italy as yeah. well? That uh, and, well it, it, and the Balearic okay. Islands. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think the, uh, I think in uh, Valencia, Valencia, they also they, speak yeah. a form of Catalan, a Valencian, mm -hmm. and I, a form mm -hmm. of Catalan. Yep. Um, yeah, and I, I, I speak that language as a result of my partner who is from Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, it's her family, family's language. So out of love for her and respect for her and her, her family, I, I, I learned that. I've been learning it for about 15 years, yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you for that, James. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a reminder, if you participate, um, I haven't mentioned what you, why Why would you participate? Why would you send your pictures of what you do you, during your break? Why would you send us your uh, questions? Why would you do your, the listening? Well, this uh, behind me is what we are going, well, we're going to send you a student pack of what's, what's behind me, which is the uh, roadmap, which is our way, the Everlearners way of helping you answer questions in exams, not particularly for modern languages, okay, but for all those subjects where you have to explain, compare, analyze, and all those skills, okay? And describe is a great example, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Des describing, identifying, discussing, evaluating. Mm -hmm. This is something we find trips up a lot of students in an awful lot of um, exam and uh, exam questions and exam answers and this model doesn't just doesn't just give you access to understanding it and making that easy but it gives you tools which will make your writing magnificent mm -hmm, exactly and, and, it, and it's quick it's, mm -hmm. it's a very rapid growth and improvement so it's well worth well mm -hmm. worth the while yeah so um, so yeah we are in our intention is to help you in general not just in Spanish or in PE when we do our PE sessions but to basically help you in general to achieve as much as you deserve um, so the next thing I want to show you, while you're, you, you're watching these videos and you may be wanting more, uh, so I want to show you, what, what we're going to show you a little bit of where you can find more, which is on our website, theeverlearner.com. And we're going to show you a few, um, a few um, images of what it looks like. And also, particularly today, we're going to show your teachers, who some of them will be watching as well, how they could create assignments for students when they're using our site. So, uh, so yeah, let's have a look at this. Let me let me just get myself over to that page. So on here, what we've seen, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm logged in here as a teacher, uh, Ms. Lockhart mm. up here. I'm logged in as a teacher, and what I want to do is I want to set it's, an assignment. I think, I think it's Mister. Is it Mister? I, yeah. I don't watch the Harry Potter films. Yeah, is that? Um, oh, what's the, his the, name? Oh, sorry. Let me take that back. I don't read the books, and I haven't seen the films really either. So yeah, it's what's it? Kenneth Branagh. 
Jennifer. The, ah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah okay, I've one. seen that character. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the the curriculum Spanish, which is for my for my curriculum is the only one I have I have in here, and I'm going to create an assignment now. What's going to happen is I've got some options in terms of what I want to do here. I could set my students some lessons to watch, and that's going to be a little bit like the live teaching Marta just did for you. You're going to be able to set the students to watch something on reflexive verbs, on relationships, on the gerund, on the superlative, on the subjunctive, on the pr on the present preterite. I'm just making stuff up. Present preterite, no. Is that not present a thing? or preterite? Thank yep. you. See, <laughs> I, I I speak foreign language. I haven't really studied foreign language. There no, you chose enough. right. Um, so what I want to do is that's the lesson one. Upload essay is where you set them a piece of work in the uh, in the assignment, and and then they submit a, a document, for example. A checkpoint is like an end of unit test. But I what what I want to do is I want to set students a test, and I want to select my group. I'm going to select from this one here, Mr. Flitwick's GCSE P, uh, GCSE Spanish group. I'm going to select a course, AQA GCSE Spanish, and I'm going to select some lessons. So I'm going to say, right, I'm interested in verbs. I'm going to scroll down the curriculum here. I'm going to get to verbs. And I want to set them questions from that whole area of how verbs work. It's quite that, a big area. That's ambitious. Do that, you want me to get, do less? Something like, something like, should we do that? Yeah. Okay, I'll stop yeah. at another knock and nothing. You, you okay. could go. You could go ambitious, but oh, okay, uh, no. that's fine. So I'm going to choose them. And what this is going to do now is it's going to tell me um, how many questions are available. So I've got 116 questions available to me, and I'm going to set a 30 question test for my students. And the site is going to randomly generate this, and I'm going to set a minimum score. And I want to say they have to achieve 80% to pass my test. I'm going to set it so that it starts right now so on the 19th. Here I have 4.31. And I'm going to set it so that it, it it's uh, I'm going to set it 4.31 in a week's time. They've got exactly a week to do it. And I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it verbs test. Okay. Or intro to verbs test. Do these questions. You'll probably put in more. Oops. You probably put in more information than this, right? But we don't need to waste our time here. Do these questions. Now, the question is, do I allow retakes from my students? I want to say to my students, yeah, you can have more than one go at this, but it is mandatory. You have to complete this on time. Now, I can assign to all of my group, or I can assign to a specific student. So I'm going to say, no, I want to say my whole, I want all my group to do this, and I'm going to create that assignment. Now, that assignment is now created. So if I now, for a moment, let me just switch over here. If I now, for a moment, hey, that, I was meant to hide that in a second. <laughs> If I now switch over to being, in this case, Harry Potter look, I'm now going to find out that if I go on my dashboard, um, you see, if I go on my dashboard here, I've got some notifications. And here you go, you've been assigned an assi I, you've been assigned to take the test, AQA GCSE Spanish 9 to 1, there. So if I go into my dashboard, assignments, and I choose my course, Nope, there's my little tracking data. It's kind of useful for me. Actually, I'm going to go and do it. I'm going to do it this way. Here's my assignments. Okay, so here's all of my assignments. I want my assignments from Spanish. And here we are. Here's my, here's my, uh, I've got some lessons to watch. And here's my verbs test. And you notice here, I've got six days left to do it. It's mandatory. I must do it. It's open today. I'm going to click in. Okay, and from here, it tells me what I have to do. And I'm going to hit test, well, myself. And I, and now I'm, a, now I'm away. Aquí en, uh, to contest, contest, contest me. Oh, oh, it's a shame. Uh. So, but I'm getting my feedback. I understand what I have to do. Okay, I'm going to go into my next question. Uh, da, 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 here's my question. Uh, when did Jorge arrive? Cuando Jorge llegó? Cuando llegó Jorge? I think it's this one. Mm -hmm. Yay. Cuando, cuando llegó Jorge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jorge is probably one of the okay. most difficult names to That's pronounce. That's really hard. I, I'm not even going to have a go at that because it's kind of a. You see here, it's kind of a. A real proper translation I have to do. Anyway, mm. I keep going and I keep going. Until you get to the until end. Until I keep going. You see the kind of questions I'm having to do. I keep going. Keep going. Drag things. I place things. You get the idea. And at the end of that, at the end of that, I'm going to get a score. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my assignment here. It's saying, are you sure you want to exit this, exit this test? We recommend taking 30 minutes. I want to say, yes, exit. And it's going to close my test. And you notice here that I have questions. I've done nine of my 30 questions and I scored 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's giving me my score, but obviously I need to do a bit more than that and I, I would need to retake that. And I'd have to get the passing um, grade of 80%. For the teacher, let me see if I can show you for the teacher. For the teacher, uh, if they go into assignments, they go into assignments. Where, where have I gone? 
Where's my verbs desk on my? Stop one off. Oh. Ah, yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay, I can go in here, and you see here, I've, I've got ten percent for Harry, and he's done nine of thirty questions on completion. Okay, so that it's not a great score, but I know he's undertaken it. Okay, and I can I can have a look if he's had more than one attempt at it. It would show me in there. I can know and just Dr Draco, Hermione, Neville, Pavati. How do you say that? Pavati. Pavati. I don't Pavati know. and Ron. They have not attempted this yet. So what does that mean for us, folks? It basically means that you set a homework for your students that's relevant. And, and decisive in terms of skill development and most important or not most and very importantly it marks that work for you it does the job for you it sets the task for you and marks it for you and the students have got martyrs teaching if they get stuck it's a pretty rich experience and we encourage you to come and take a look it could be really really important for your students anyway that's that's enough for me Great. demoing this stuff. It's all right, fantastic, James. Uh, muchas, muchísimas gracias por esta demostración de la web. De nada, um, como siempre. Perfecto, estupendo. Uh, so, without, yeah, let's just um, move to the next part. Let's now quickly get looking at how the relative uh, verbs work or, or how we can use verbs in a, re uh, sorry, did I say relative? Reflexive. reflexive. Um, thank you. <laughs> reflexive way. Um, and after that, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be straight back. Okay. Hasta ahora. Vamos. Marta, be before we do that, oh, I, well I, I must, I'm, I must show this, uh, this, this, uh, revision break image. Oh, uh, yeah, the revision break. I was going to do it after, so we, but... So we have Big Al. So this is from Big Al, and Big Al says, ¿Qué? 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 Uh -huh. ¿Qué? Oh, there's a little issue with that, ¿qué? What is the issue? ¿Qué? What is the issue? Well, for, for me, I think I think the issue for me, I think it, first of all, it needs an accent, It right? needs an accent on but, the but also, but, but also, it shouldn't have the exclamation and the upside down question mark in front of the ¿qué? Exactly, both in front, upside down. Yes, yeah, we yeah. need the, the upside down question mark and exclamation mark. Always, always, always in front of uh, exclamations and questions in Spanish. Consider yourself disciplined, yes, uh, Big, Big Al. Al. It's, it's just disappointing, <laughs> if I'm honest. Okay, so, uh, Marta, we are... Vale. You, you let me know when you're ready. Mm -hmm. and sí, we'll... estoy a punto, estoy lista. Vamos a por los pronombres relativos. Right, so here I am with this uh, second canvas, and this is on the reflexive verb. So this is our grammar part of the session. So let's have a look at what, what, what I mean by reflexive verbs. So I'll, I'm going to give you um, a couple of examples. So when you say, for example, in Spanish, um, mi padre, mi padre y yo nos llevamos, nos llevamos bien, okay? This nos llevamos is reflexive. If you say in Spanish um, something on the lines of um, Juan y María, Juan y María se casan um, en la iglesia. Juan and María are getting married at the church. Uh, so this se casan is also a reflexive verb. So let's have a look what we understand by reflexive verbs and how on earth they work. While I'm talking about these reflexive verbs, just to, something to bear in mind. Most of what I'm going to be explaining is going to be based on the present tense, okay, which we've got here. I've put here uh, the the three conjugations of the in, in of the present tense, the regular verbs, what we saw on uh, in the session in, on Tuesday. <clears throat> but reflexive verbs are like any other verb, okay? They're a normal verb. So you can use them in any tense, okay? But so for clarity, we're going to start by um, looking at how they would work in the present tense. Once we understand it in the present tense, we can then use them in any other tense, okay? So um, how do these verbs work? Right, the first thing we need to bear in mind, I'm sure you, most of you will have bumped into the situation where you look something up in the dictionary. Yes, that happens, that still happens. People do look things up in the dictionary. Let's say you want to look at, you want to know how to say in Spanish to fall in love okay to fall in love so you look it up in the dictionary and lo and behold you find that to fall in love in spanish is 
enamorarse. Now, you, at that point, you remember that your teacher has told you, yes, you do remember something that your teacher has said to you that is really good. So your teacher has told you that in Spanish, all verbs, when you look them up in the dictionary, so in their infinitive form, will end in AR, ER, or IR. But this is not what we've got here. What we've got here is that this verb ends in C. What's happened here? Okay, look a little bit more closely. We've got AR here. So after all, this verb is an AR verb, is enamorar. However, this verb tends most commonly, more often than not, is used in this way. And in the sense of to fall in love, if someone falls in love with someone else, it, it's certainly used in this way. It, it's used as a reflexive verb. So, uh, you know, in front of this situation, what on earth do I do with this? Right, we need two steps here. I'm going to, um, yeah, th th there are two steps that we need to take, okay? First of all, I'm going to start with the easier step which is what I do with the verb. So the verb will conjugate like any other normal verb, with like any other regular verb. So in this case, enamorar. So we would change it, depending on what we want to say, using these endings, because it's an AR verb, right? So if I want to say that I fall in love, I may or may not use the yo, and I will say enamor, losing the AR, and I'll add the O ending. If I want to say that you fall in love, I'll say enamor, and then I'll use the I'll use the AS. If I want to say that he, she fall in love, enamor, ah. If I want to say that we fall in love, enamor amos. So notice it, it works like any other verb, okay, or, or any other regular verb. So, vosotros enamoráis, and they fall in love. I'll bring this down up a little bit. Enamoran, okay? So, up to here, they don't work. They are, you know, some of them will be regular, some of them will be irregular, but they, they, there's nothing particular about them okay, other than that they work slightly different in terms of what we're going to see next, okay? But this first bit is completely regular or, or irregular, depending on the verb, but it's completely, it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. Now, the second step, the second thing that you need to bear in mind is this, that it's got this C. And what happens to this C? Well, it depends on what I want to say, because it will take a slightly different form depending on who is doing the action, okay? So in this case, on who is falling in love. So if it's me, if I want to say I fall in love, then it would be yo me enamoro. If it was you, it would be tú te enamoras. If it was he or she, it would be él o ella uh, se enamora. We fall in love would be nos enamoramos. You guys fall in love, sorry, you guys fall in love would be os enamoráis, and they fall in love would be se enamoran, okay? So notice how these are optional, okay? As you will have learned by now, as you will know, these you can you may use them, you may not, depending on the context, depending on what you want. But these, in the case of reflexive verbs, these are compulsory. You have to use these um, pronouns, okay? And you have to use the right one for, you know, depending on, on the situation. So whenever I do something, it will be me, you, will be te, he, she, or you in the form of respect, se, we will be nos, os, and se. And notice how for each of these, um, uh, each of these pronouns, therefore, corresponds an ending, okay? They, when, when they are reflexive verbs, they need to, they, they go sort of in pairs, okay? To this pronoun corresponds this ending and so on and so forth, okay? So if um, in that case, as I had um, up, um, up there, had the verb casarse, okay? To get married, casarse. If I wanted to say they get married, 
I would say, um, so I would take this, so in the case of se, of, of they or he, that the se stays se. So this se would, would go here, and because it's they, I need the an a -N ending. So it would be cas, removing the ar, and se casan, they get married. Okay, if instead of casarse it was to get annoyed, okay, to get annoyed is enfadarse, to get annoyed or get upset, and I wanted to say we get upset, so I would take the se would go to the front in the form of nos, and then I would take enfad, get rid of the ar, and instead of that I take the amos, nos enfadamos we get upset. Okay, so notice, remember, the endings, nothing to worry about, generally regular, there will be some irregulars, but that's that. But what you need to pay attention is to the pronoun that will replace that C from the back of the infinitive. Okay, now there are two groups of verbs which you should be especially aware of because there, there are a lot of um, a lot of reflexive verbs within these groups. So one this one group of verbs is the verbs to do with relationships. Okay, so as, we, as we've seen, casarse, to get married, separarse, to separate, divorciarse, llevarse bien o mal, enamorarse, enfadarse, pelearse. And notice in this case, it's just to mention, it's completely... It's a complete coincidence that they all end in AR, okay? Um, there, there's no rule by which re, um, reflexive verb end in, end in AR. In fact, we'll see here in a second that in, in this case, there's one, for example, that ends in IR. There are, they, there are reflexive verbs that end in other verbs, uh, sorry, in other endings. But in this case, it, you know, the, the most common in relationships, they seem to uh, end in AR. Okay, um, so in Spanish, just to so that, that that might help remind yourself of, of what these reflexive verbs are. So in Spanish, for example, in the in the tense of casarse, when we use this verb, I'm not saying I get married. If I say me caso, okay, me caso would be I get married or I'm getting married. Me caso. If I translated it literally, it will be it would be something like I marry myself. Okay, if I, if I want to say we get married which would be nos casamos, um, or we are getting married, I'm, I'm literally saying we marry ourselves. And we know that's not what we mean, because you can't marry yourself, you need someone to do it. But in Spanish, that's how the verb is used, okay? Uh, in, the same, in the same case, separarse, so we separate ourselves. Divorciarse, we divorce ourselves. Okay, and and yes, that doesn't mean that it's as easy as to say, right, that's it. We've you know we 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 have divorced. No, someone has to do it. But that's how we use the verb. Okay, um, and we've got here, for example, also the very common um, in the in the case of, of talking about relationships that you will find a lot. The expression llevarse bien, llevarse mal. Well, that's what it is. It's also a reflexive construction. Okay, so we get on well. So we get on well, of course, it will be nos, and then ye, of course, the amos, because it's we, and then if we get on well, nos llevamos bien. If I want to say we get on badly, nos llevamos mal, okay? In the same way that this happens with relationships, it also happens with verbs of daily routine, okay? Verbs of daily routine, like despertarse, Levantarse, ducharse, lavarse los dientes, peinarse, vestirse, acostarse. So in Spanish, I wake myself up, I, I, I um, get myself up, I shower myself. So for example, if I wanted to say I have a shower, in Spanish I'm saying I shower myself. So I need to, to take the se and turn it into a me and then duchar would conjugate normally. Ducho because it's I. Okay, if I wanted to say I, uh, sorry, let's say we get dressed, okay, um, so in this case the se, because it's we get dressed, it will be nos, and then it's vestir, so it's an I art verb, so it's we, so we need the imos ending, so we need nos vestimos, okay. So notice how I need to be juggling both things, the pronoun at the front and also the verb ending. 
Okay, one thing to bear in mind is the last thing I'm going to mention, infinitives. Okay, sometimes, sometimes there are some constructions where I need to use infinitive. So, for example, if I want to say, um, I can't, uh, I can't have a shower this morning. Let's say the boiler's gone. Okay, I want to say in Spanish, I can't have a shower this morning. So, I can't is in Spanish, no puedo. Now, the verb poder is always followed by infinitive. Okay, so I need the verb in infinitive after this, just because the construction so, um, so demands it. So, have a shower, to have a shower, we've seen is ducharse. Okay, so I would be tempted to say no puedo ducharse esta mañana but there's a problem because it's me who can't have a shower so in this case the se needs to be re replaced by the me okay but it's still kept as a word so as a single word so it will be no puedo ducharme esta mañana okay same thing if i said for example um if I said we want to brush brush our hair, okay? We want to is queremos, queremos, um, to, to brush or to comb our hair, okay? So peinarse is to brush or to comb. So queremos peinar, and because it's we want to do it, would be peinarnos, okay? El pelo. Queremos peinarnos el pelo, or just peinarnos, okay? So, do remember that when the verb is in infinitive, we still need to change the um, pronoun, okay? So, I hope this isn't too mind-boggling, uh, to, you know, to avoid it, you know, becoming really mind-boggling. Two things you can do. One, practice, practice, practice until it becomes not second nature necessarily, but until you, you get a really good grip of it. And secondly, look at some of the expressions that you really, really need to know, okay? It's things like this, nos llevamos bien, uh, me caso, uh, nos casamos, okay? Some of these verbs that are going to be the most common ones that you may have to use in your writing or in your speaking or that you may be um, reading or listening when you do your your um, yeah your, your exams. So do do look at those and try to maybe memorize a couple just so that you don't get surprised when you when you see them or hear them. Okay, so that's all for now. Um, let me just move across the table and I'm straight back with you. Y ya estamos de vuelta. Muy bien. So, I hope that was useful. For some of you, it may have opened your eyes. Oh, I understand how these work. Some of you may be thinking, oh, I'm still don't quite sure about, I'm not quite sure how they work. If that's your case, just watch it again. And, uh, you know, and make sure also, of course, that you are taking notes on your note sheet. Yeah, it's the right one. And also that you do the practice questions afterwards, okay? So you can see if you're really finding it hard, go also and ask your teacher, okay? Do make sure, never be um, never be afraid to ask questions. So James, have we got any questions? I have a question. Tell me. Let me take my headphones off, because otherwise I hear myself twice, which is a little disconcerting. So I was interested in the verb enamorarse. Mm -hmm. Enamorarse, and, uh, sí. I, would like, I was gonna ask you a question. Would you, would you mind describing to us um, falling in love? Um, in your in your life experience, <laughs> describe falling in love in my yeah. Life. So you so you told this story, you told this nice story earlier about this this couple that. Uh huh. You know, so I, I thought just a bit of personal experience from you. What would be? How would you describe that to us? Um, I, I don't quite understand. What do you mean? How, 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 how would so, you well, so 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 descri describe the experience of, of falling in love in your life. Oh. So tell us about it. Okay. Well, falling in, in love in Spanish, please. Oh, in español. Um, pues eh, me enamoré hace 15 años, me enamoré de un chico joven, guapo, inglés, y era compañero de trabajo. 
era profesor de educación física. Y um, nos hicimos novios, nos conocimos, nos gustamos mucho y nunca, nunca nos casamos, no nos hemos casado. Hoy seguimos, estamos juntos y tenemos dos hijas. ¿Ya? How about the cat? What about the cat? Oh, the cat. También tenemos un gato. El gato se llama Jessup y es de color negro. ¿Sí? Well, the, the impression I have of that guy is he seems quite cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other any other questions? No, I think we're, we're I think we're all questioned. I think we're all questioned up. Um, I think what we really need from people who are viewing this on demand afterwards. I think it's really important that you guys, as we said before, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. I mm -hmm. cannot emphasize that enough. Yep. It's really, 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 Just really down important. Here. And it, it's it's and almost nothing for you guys. But it means significant for us. Subscribe and turn notifications yes, on. Yes, absolutely. Also remember that you can do the practice questions, and one of the pra the practice question that you can do online is also here on your page. Paper, but of course you will you will need to access the online question in order to listen to the to the um, sound file and uh, yeah I think that's everything we've got for indeed, indeed it is so we'll uh, we'll wish everyone a very good session. a very good afternoon even if it's super hot it is I can, yeah, fr from scorching. where I'm from where I'm standing I can I can see a woman literally hanging out of the window to get some fresh air getting fresh air while she's smoking a cigarette that is which yeah, is which refreshing. is refreshing yeah which is very refreshing yeah. so, so the, the heat is getting to everybody mm -hmm. it's sweaty yeah. in here thank it god is, it's not smell vision in here because nope. it's outrageous And uh, we wish you guys a very good evening. And also remind you, the third revision session will be on this coming Tuesday between 1 and 2 p.m. Do join us live. Do, do join us live. But if you really can't do it, remember, you can always watch us on demand by clicking, by using the same link that you, will, that you would use to access the live streaming. Okay? So, for now, hasta luego. Buenas tardes. Y que estéis frescos, porque hace mucho calor. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, hasta luego. The traditional classroom environment doesn't suit everyone. Students that don't fit this pace of learning begin to lose confidence. The problem is, the current learning model has holes in it. Luckily, the everlearner.com is here to fill those holes. With the Everlearner classroom, each student is given a chance to master each subject at their own pace. With thousands of video tutorials and tens of thousands of automated questions on the site, students can progress at their own individual pace. And because every interaction is tracked within the site, teachers can review students' progress and gain access to razor-sharp data. Teachers will have more time to engage with small groups and be better informed of where their time and support is needed. With the Everlearner, teachers can leave the traditional model behind and become facilitators, coaches and inspirers. There's a reason we have over 100,000 registered students. To learn more, visit our website today.
drive for you. 